Hello and welcome to today's session. I hope you're all well from whichever part of the world you're watching. Today, I'd like to talk about the key thing that only 3% of wellness leaders in hospitality do, and that is stay the course with their wellness concept. A couple of weeks ago, we saw the biggest mistake that wellness directors make with their wellness offering, and that is bet on the wrong horse, so to speak. That is get their wellness concept wrong. And the reason we wellness leaders get our wellness concept wrong is because we have never been taught how to write a concept, let alone how to create the right concept for a particular hotel. Hence, it is no surprise that our wellness offerings rarely generate more than 1% to 3% of total hotel revenue. And last week, what we saw is that you might get your wellness concept right. You might get it on the asset quadrant. You might also understand that you are not in the business of selling treatments, products, and services, but you're in the business of solving the well-being related problems of your guests. You can get that right also, but getting the concept right is only a small part of the success of your wellness offering. The second key part of the success relates to skillful implementation, because when we are creating our concept, it's all about a blueprint. Even if we have the best research and market data supporting our concept, our vision, it's still an idea. And that idea needs to be implemented. And the idea is always very, very different to the reality. Now, last week, I talked about how we need to learn how to skillfully go down that slope to what we saw last week, the valley of despair. Now, if there are incredibly few wellness directors get that, get, that get the concept right, even fewer skillfully implement that concept. And out of that percentage of wellness leaders that manage to skillfully implement their wellness concept, we only have a very, very tiny percentage of wellness leaders that actually report huge success. And what does huge success mean with the wellness offering? It generates more than five to 10% of total hotel revenue. Now, as usual, I have a presentation um, to illustrate my point. If you remember in these last couple of weeks, I have been talking a lot about the emotional cycle of change or so to speak, the Dunning-Kruger effect. And that applies to any new project. We're going to implement any new concept, any new business and our wellness concept is no different. And it doesn't matter how experienced you are or the strength of the brand that is backing you. You always go through this emotional cycle of change. Now, the peaks and troughs vary as you gain more skill, but the cycle is the same. And the cycle has five phases. And phase one, so to speak, we have seen this in our previous um, videos is, you know, what they call, not what I call, Mount Stupid. So when we have created our concept, we're at the top of Mount Stupid. That is where we have uninformed optimism. And it's an incredibly important place to be at because if you don't have that level of passion, vision, romanticism, you will definitely not create a wellness concept that is going to get you excited to actually implement. However, as I mentioned earlier on, that is only still at the blueprint phase. Things start getting entertaining when we actually begin the implementation phase. And when we begin that implementation phase, what happens is the reality kicks in. Our team dynamic shift, people leave, budgets get cut, um, accidents happen, guests complain, things don't work out the way we expect. That is all part and parcel 
of the implementation process. And it's always going downhill in terms of the emotional cycle. That's when we get into phase two, where it is informed pessimism, where we actually understand that, oh my God, I had this concept and the reality of implementing it is very different. Now, all of us go down this slope into that valley of despair. And last week, I talked about how we can skillfully actually ski down that slope and enjoy our way down to the valley of despair or the lowest emotional point. And once we master that skill, we also build a team that is incredibly strong and willing to do wellness the way we want to. However, the challenge comes in phase three, when the majority of us wellness leaders aren't given the skills to actually see ourselves past this very, very difficult situation. We are at emotionally the lowest point we find ourselves that is shortly after the implementation phase. And this tends to be the point where we have soured majority of the relationships with our colleagues. We find it incredibly demoralizing and difficult, and we just want out. And the wellness directors that actually end up having success with the wellness offering, and I've been there, is when we actually stay the course of our wellness concept. And that is why I designed the last two stages or the next two stages of my essence model of navigation and consistency. So when we are in that valley of despair, what gets us out of it are the stages of navigation and consistency. What navigation ensures is that we are staying on track with our big picture goal, that whatever trend, piece of equipment, brand that we add into our wellness offering actually aligns with our big picture goals. And if it doesn't, then it is not right for our particular wellness concept. No matter how tempting it might be to add it, because we supposedly think it's having so much success in another spa, it doesn't mean that if it's successful in another spa or wellness offering, that it's going to be successful in ours. And once we are clear that we're staying on track with our big picture goals, the next step is to ensure that we are facilitating the delivery of remarkable experiences each and every time. And that is when we're setting our teams up for success. Yes, we are in the people's business. Yes, humans make mistake. But I think the biggest mistake we make as ops related people or people who are in the bricks and mortar business is thinking that human blunders are part and pro part and parcel of what operations is about and that's a very slippery slope to go down you can prevent glitches we have seen this in the aviation industry we see this in the medical field where the stakes are incredibly high of mistakes human error hence we have checks in place to ensure that things happen perfectly each and every time so that our people can shine and deliver amazing experiences. But what tends to happen is what I see, that's why I say only 3% of wellness leaders actually have success with their, with, with their wellness offering on a, and are reporting more than 5 to 10% of total hotel revenue from wellness is because they've actually stayed the course. They have created the right concept from the get-go. They have been on Mount Stupid. Then they have very skillfully navigated their way down to the valley of despair. And they have stuck through their concept, fine-tuned areas that are probably incredibly difficult to fine-tune. And you don't fine-tune it on the first or second or third setting. Sometimes you have to repeatedly fine-tune your wellness offering before it actually has success. And the ones 
the wellness leaders that I have found have had success with their wellness offering is because they have chosen to stay the course with their wellness concept. And why is it that difficult? Because it's not the part that is that sexy. It is not the part that seems exciting and fun. It's not the part where you see results straight away. It's just about one day at a time, taking that little measure each day to ensure that you are fine tuning and tweaking, rinsing and repeating until you get it right. And you do get it right at the other end. That's how you enter into phase four. That's how you enter into phase five. Now, I talk a lot about why 97% of wellness leaders find themselves managing wellness offerings that do not represent more than one to 3% of total hotel revenue from wellness. And the reason always comes back to us. We bet on the wrong course. We do not create the right wellness concept for a particular property. And our hospitality colleagues are looking at us, the specialists, to be able to create that right concept. Then, secondly, once we have that right concept, there needs to be a skillful implementation. There needs to be structure. And we need to pull together the right team that is able and willing to do wellness the way we want to. And that implementation process is not attractive. That implementation process is incredibly grinding and tiring at times. Then we get to the point of that valley of despair and 97% of wellness leaders give up there only. Only 3% actually insist, actually deep dive into what isn't working. They try to understand why it isn't working and they put the systems in place to ensure that their teams consistently deliver remarkable transformation to their guests each and every time. And really what gives us success is nothing like earth-shattering innovation. It's actually good old-fashioned staying the course and seeing our wellness concept through the finish line. So on that lovely note, I hope you found this useful and um, wishing you all a fantastic day ahead.